Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie. In this lesson, we're going to be learning the pronunciation of the letter combination TH when it is not pronounced as the TH sound, like we learned in the previous lesson, lesson 14. Let's switch over to our screen, our lesson screen. And we'll get rid of all of this at the top. Okay, so let's get ready for this. Sometimes the TH sound is not pronounced as the TH sound as we learned in lesson 14, like I said. It can be pronounced as a T sound. <clears throat> and the letter that follows may or may not be pronounced as in ant hill. Thomas, courthouse, or it can be silent as in the words asthma, clothes, or clothesline. So listen carefully and repeat the following sentences because your normal reaction would be, if you see the TH combination, you would want to pronounce it like we learned before, like but sometimes it's not like that. So listen to these sentences and repeat after me. The transition to adulthood has many challenges. She lives in a beautiful penthouse in New York City. I love New York City, by the way. I just love it. I am happy that I don't have an outhouse in my backyard. We are going to move to Chatham. There are enormous potholes on the roads in Montreal. And that is a very true sentence. <clears throat> Did you ever go to Thailand? I felt a little lightheaded on the plane. Use the pot holder to take the pot out of the oven. There are many ant hills on the patio in my backyard. Have you ever climbed to the top of a lighthouse? Thyme leaves are used for seasoning. A foothill is a small hill at the foot of a higher hill. We rent a boathouse to park our boat for the summer months. The television reporters were at the courthouse today. Thomas and Terry are twins. Hang the clothes on the clothesline with clothespins. Asthma is a chronic lung disease. Apartheid is racial segregation. The doctors used a general anesthesia before his surgery. They were rewarded with knighthood for their bravery. <clears throat> Many years ago, secretaries were required to know shorthand. I thought that maybe some of you don't know what shorthand is, so I happened to take out some books that I had on a shelf just to show you what shorthand is. A funny little story, 
many years ago when I was a student, many, many years ago, going back maybe, hmm, I don't know, I'd have to do the math, 30, 35 years, something like that, I took a speed writing class in school to help me write faster and take more notes just to be able to, you know, uh, keep up with the beat and write faster. So I took this class and then um, I got a job uh, working for uh, a law firm in Montreal that summer. And um, one day one of the lawyers said to me, oh, I, I saw on your CV that you know shorthand or yeah, shorthand, I did speed writing. And I said, yes. He says, well, would you be able to take a letter for me today? And I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't think I would be doing it for somebody else, especially for a lawyer, because when you transcribe things like that, legal terminology, you better be pretty good. You know, you don't want to make mistakes with that during the transcription. So I said, okay. I was really afraid though. And so I took his letter for him. I wrote everything down in uh, speed writing and then I transcribed it and, and then he read it and it, it was good. It was okay. So I was really happy about that. And then uh, that summer, uh, that fall after the summer, I got a job in a um, business school teaching business communications. And this particular school was teaching shorthand. So I got that on my list of classes to teach. And so, it, you know, of all the courses that I taught before I started teaching English, these, I kept the books. Those were the only books that I kept. And I had to teach shorthand to the three groups of students. That was just one of their classes in uh, the communications classes. And I kept them and I thought I would pull them out to show you for some of you that don't know, maybe the younger generation, you don't know what shorthand is. Well, this is what it is. Shorthand, Greg shorthand. And these were the books that I used originally published, believe it or not, in 1949, 1949, believe it or not. And uh, I was surprised to learn after all these years when I pulled up these books just this week that they are published by McGraw Hill, which is my publisher today for my books. <clears throat> the Basic English Series 1, 2, and 3, the first, second, third editions. Anyway, so I'll show you a little bit what um, shorthand looks like just for your interest. It's a symbolic writing method also known as stenography. So we, you would go through this book and learn how to write like this. It was just a lot faster and at the time secretaries would use this for their bosses. The boss would ramble off a letter and the secretary would write the whole letter in this form, go back to her desk and transcribe it. And I just thought it was interesting to show you this. I thought I would never have any use for these books again, but I just really enjoyed the, the subject. I, I thought it, you know, it's a different method of communication, of language. So we would have to learn all of this, teach all of this, and then, you know, looks like this. So this was an actually an excellent textbook. And once you did the whole book, you were quite a good stenographer. You were very good with shorthand. And you had this little workbook that you would have to have all of this text, many, many pages of text. And you would have to transcribe all of that to shorthand. And that would be your work for the program for that course. So I just thought that was an interesting story to tell you so that you know what shorthand is in sentence number 21. Okay. Just thought I'd let you know. Okay, back to the lesson. She had seen firsthand the effects of the experiment. Oh, and that's it. Okay, well, 
<clears throat> I hope this lesson helped you better pronounce the TH when it is not pronounced as the TH sound. So let's go back over here and I'd like to remind you to uh, like and subscribe to my page so that you can keep receiving more pronunciation exercises. There will be lot, a lot more pronunciation exercises as well as tons of grammar exercises to come. Uh, please also, if you would like to leave a comment, comments are always appreciated. Also, if you need more help with your English, you can get yourselves a copy of the basic English workbook. Uh, this is the second edition. You need the third edition. It'll help you with so much. Your verb tenses, reading, writing, spelling, um, adjectives, possessive adjectives. Really, it's a very complete workbook. You'll have a lot, many, many hours of uh, work to do in here. The answer key is at the back. Uh, published by McGraw-Hill, like I mentioned before, available on Amazon and all other online bookstores and also uh, brick and mortar bookstores as well. It's available everywhere in the entire world. Also, if you need to get better with your English verb tenses, this is a very complete workbook, concentrates only on your verb tenses. I'll be putting a few of these lessons online later when I have some time. Answer key at the back to support you, also available on Amazon. So, I'm going to uh, sign off, get ready to teach a class, and I will see you guys in the next lesson. So have a wonderful day and a wonderful evening, and I will see you guys soon. Bye for now.